Hello again, as you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy over here for EliTheComputerGuy.com and today's class is setting up port forwarding. So port forwarding is a very important tool, it is a very necessary tool if you are going to be running servers on your network that are going to be accessed from the outside world. And that is the important part. If the servers are going to be accessed from the outside world, you need to set up port forwarding. What port forwarding does is within the router, it forwards traffic on certain ports to specific servers. So if you have a web server on your internal network and you want it to be accessed from the outside world, you would configure your router to forward port 80 to that particular server. So if you have an email server, if you have a VPN server, if you have a web server, if you have an FTP server, all of those different networking services use specific ports and port forwarding is forward forwarding those ports to specific servers on the network. Now it's very important to understand that with one router and one IP address, you can only forward a single port to a single internal IP address. What this means is that if you have one web server on your internal network, you would for forward port 80 to that one web server. If you have two web servers on the network, you would have to come up with some other scheme in order to transfer traffic between those two servers. So when you're forwarding ports, you can only forward it to one computer. So with that, let's go over the whiteboard just so I can explain to you how all this works and then I can give a demonstration uh, on my computer. So basically, when we are dealing with port forwarding, you know, we have the internet. So we have the internet and we have you connected to the internet. Now, you have a router or modem that is connected to your internet connection and below that you have all of your different servers. So let's say you have a server here that is your web server, your www server, and that's port 80. Well, as you know, you will have an external IP address for your internet connection. So let's say your external IP address is, I don't know, 203.55.66.4. That is your external IP address. What you are going to do to set up port forwarding is within the router, you are going to forward port 80 to this internal IP address for this web server. So let's say this web server is 192.168.1.10. What you're going to do is you're going to forward port 80 to the IP address 192.168.1.10. What that is going to do is if somebody is coming into your network from the internet, so they're in a computer and they're sitting out in Paris or Bangladesh or somewhere else, what they are going to do is they are going to use the IP address 203.55.66.4. When they plug that into their web browser, that is going to direct them to your external IP address, which will put them into your router. Your router is going to see that they're on port 80 and will then forward to to your web server. Now, since I know some of you guys are new, you may not understand where that IP address comes from, but that is basically DNS resolution. So on their computer, they're going to type in CNN.com or whatever your uh, domain name is, that will resolve to your external IP address. That means using the web browser, they're going to come in, they will get automatically redirected to this one server. This server will provide them the website and it will go back out that way. If you have an FTP server, the same thing will happen. What is it? Port 25. They come in, it'll get routed to the FTP server, and then they'll be able to connect that way. That is the importance of what port forwarding is. So remember, every single networking protocol uses its own port. Uh, FTP uses a specific port. Um, web, HTTP uses a specific port. VPN services use specific ports. SIP, voice over IP traffic uses specific ports. So depending on what networking protocol you use, you will forward that particular port to whatever server on your network provides a service. So that's the point of why you do port forwarding. So let's go over to the computer so I can show you a little bit about this. So basically, 
let me let me come back to me basically what we've got here is we just have a normal small business router here so this is the old standard router I used to sell all my clients it was a Linksys business class router I don't know if they still sell them anymore essentially what would happen is this would connect to your internet modem and this provided all the services for your network It provided DHCP and DNS and all of that it also did the port forwarding so this would connect to the modem all the internet traffic would come into this from the outside world and then using port forwarding this would then redirect the traffic to whatever particular server that traffic needed to go to so let's go onto my Windows 7 computer so I can show you um, how this works so being that this is a small business router you manage it through a normal web browser so I'm going to be using Google Chrome in order to connect to this particular router to manage it if you're going to be using Linksys Netgear D-Link any of that kind of stuff you're going to be using a web browser to manage it now in order to, to know what IP address we need we're going to have to go and see what the default gateway for this computer is so DHCP is turned on so this computer automatically picked up an IP address from this router so all we're gonna do is we're gonna type in IP config to see what the IP information is now you're gonna see here that the I the default gateway is 10.1.10.1 that means the routers IP address is 10.1.10.1 so we're going to use that IP address in order to get into the router so we come back here to Google Chrome and all we do is go 10.1.10.1 all you do is you plug in that IP address and hit enter and then you're going to be asked for a username and password so I know with this particular model what the username and password is and I can log in so now I am inside this particular uh, Linksys router now it's very important to understand all of these routers are slightly different so basically what I'm trying to show here, you here is the concepts that are required in order to do port forwarding your specific router may be a little bit different and you may have to do a little bit of troubleshooting to figure out how to make it work now the one thing uh, I want to show you to make sure you don't get confused is be careful about port management so since we're doing port forwarding you're going to be thinking that you want to mess with port management right because we're, we're dealing with ports well whenever you're talking about the router and you're talking about port management on these small business routers normally they have a switch built in right well when they're talking about port management many times they're actually talking about these specific ports they're not talking about the networking ports so if you see port management and you click on port management and then you have no idea what they're talking about that may be what's going on so if we go here and we click on port management we will see the port ID so so one two three four DMZ internet these are the physical ports on the computer and these are not what we're messing with right now what we're gonna do is we want to go to port forwarding for this particular router we go to setup and then we go over and we can see forwarding so we're looking for forwarding port forwarding or forwarding so we can click on this and this is what allows us to do forwarding so this particular router still has some of the configurations left back from when I had my computer repair shop so these configurations were for a VPN server that no longer exists basically as I said before what we're doing is we're forwarding specific ports to a specific IP address so my old server used to be 10.1.10.2 so what we can see here is that point-to-point -point tunneling protocol TCP port 1723 is forwarded to 10.1.10.2 IPsec uh, UDP 500 is forwarded to 10.1.10.2 and layer 2 tunneling protocol 1701 is uh, forwarded again to 10.1.10.2 so this shows you what the current forwarding is so many times they will have services already pre-configured for you so you can say what services you want to go to what computer so let's say we want to set up an FTP server so port 21 then so all I have to do is click on FTP port 21 and then I tell it what IP address to forward 
the uh, the that the uh, network traffic too. So I can say forward FTP traffic, TCP port 21 to 10.1.10.20. Now, depending on your router, they may have this little checkbox that says enable. If you don't check that, even though you put in the configuration, it's not going to be enabled and then that's gonna be worthless. So always make sure you actually do enable what you're plugging in and now all you do is you add to list. Once you've added to the list, you go down, you save the settings, always make sure you save the settings so that puts that into your router, and now it is set. So now we have FTP, TCP, port 21, goes to 10.1.10.20. So if we had the file transfer protocol, network communication coming in, and we had a server at 10.1.10.20, all of that network traffic would be routed there. So basically, whenever you use one of these routers, they're going to have a lot of pre-configured uh, networking protocols in here. But since there's always new networking protocols, and since there's thousands and thousands and thousands of possible ports to be used, sometimes you have to add your own port. So you will always have an option such as service management. So here what we can do is we can click on this and we can add a service. So I can just say I want to create a service named test. I want to use protocol TCP and I want the port range to be 69. So it will be 69 to 69. All we have to do is we then add to list and when we do save settings. So that has now saved that new service. So now that this is updated, if we scroll down, we can see that the new service test port 69 is there. So I can do, I want to do go test, and I want it to go to 10.1.10.20. I want to enable, and I want to add to list. Then all we do is we go down, we save settings, and now that test protocol will be uh, automatically sent to 10.1.10.20. So that is all there is to port forwarding. So the big question that comes up then is, is if you're do dealing with servers that deal with ports that are not normally used, the question is, well, Eli, how do I know what ports to forward to the server? You always look at the documentation. So small business server, Microsoft small business server, if you go and look at the documentation for setting it up, it will tell you what eight to 10 ports you should forward to that particular server to make it work. If you're installing a digital surveillance server, they use a lot of different protocols uh, uh, ports also so all you do is you look at the manual you see what ports have to be uh, forwarded to the server and then you just configure it that way you will always have the option of either TCP or UDP frankly if in doubt go with TCP it's almost always TCP but again within the documentation it will tell you whether it's TCP or UDP this is one thing unless you know it you don't know it. Again, sometimes you can assume it's TCP, but as always, just look in the uh, the manual and they'll be able to tell you or do a Google search. So the important thing to understand with all these different networking protocols is one router can route different ports to different servers. So this could route a hundred different ports to a hundred different servers, but you can't route a single port to multiple servers. So I could have port 80 going to one server and port 21 for FTP going to another server, but I could not have two servers that would both pick up port 80. You can do some things with fancy routing and, and load balancing and all that kind of stuff, but that's a whole different issue. So if you're gonna be trying to run a game server out of your house, if you're gonna try to run a voice over IP server out of your house, if you're gonna try to run a web server out of your house, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be doing this port forwarding and that is what will make it work. The one warning that I will give you if you're looking at setting up a server inside your house is do remember if you have residential internet service, whether it's cable internet or fiber optic internet or DSL, sometimes they close ports and simply do not allow you to use them. So be careful with that. That's one reason why I say you should always use business class internet service because they always uh, leave all the ports open. But if you are using uh, residential service, sometimes they close the ports. So even if you do port forwarding, it's still not going to work for you. 
But that is the basics of how port forwarding works if you're going to be setting up a server uh, inside your house. Again, remember what I showed you here is basically what it looks like. Depending on what particular router you're using, um, you may have different configuration screens and so on. It may look a little bit different. You may have to play with it a little bit. The big warning though, is especially since you guys are new guy, newbies, um, Sometimes when it's talking about ports, it's talking about these physical ports back here and these are things you don't want to mess with. You want to mess with the port forwarding itself. So if you want to modify this in your router, connect your computer to the router, pull that DHCP IP address, find what the default gateway is by simply going to the command prompt and typing ipconfig. Once you have that default gateway, then what you're going to do is you're going to use a web browser to go to that IP address going to log in, you're going to find the port forwarding, you're going to find the ports either pre-configured or you're going to create them, you're going to point them at the IP address you need to point them at, you're going to make sure it's enabled and then you're going to save, 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 save. Again, a new person error that happens a lot is they forget to hit the save button and so that actually does not get written, written into the configuration file and then it doesn't work and they rip out their hair and it's all bad. Uh, and that's really all you have to do. So, as you know, I'm Eli the Computer Guy. This was setting up port forwarding. I enjoyed teaching this class and look forward to seeing you at the next one.